House of the Dragon Season 1, Prince Aemon came to life wonderfully. There are a number of other characters who have the potential to do the same in Season 2 and beyond. Today, we are going to go over the full life of one of those characters, Alice Rivers. Just a heads up that there will be major spoilers for the show since her life is intertwined with some of the biggest characters and the biggest events of the story. Alice Rivers lived at the infamous castle of Harrenhal and her backstory is a bit of a mystery. Grandmaster Munkin claimed that she was a serving wench who dabbled in potions and spells, whereas Septon Eustace claimed that she was a woods witch. Her last name, Rivers, suggests that she was a bastard, but little was known of her father and less of her mother. Both Grandmaster Munkin and Septon Eustace claimed that she was sired by Lord Lionel Strong, and if true, that would make her the natural half-sister to Harwin and Larry's. But that might not be true. Mushroom claimed that Alice was much older than them, that she was actually their wet nurse and she might have even been the wet nurse to Lord Lionel himself. Mushroom claimed that she was a malign enchantress who bathed in the blood of virgins to preserve her youth. Either way, she was at least 40 years of age, but she looked younger than her years when the war began. Supposedly, all of Alice's own children had been stillborn, but she was a wet nurse to countless babes born of other women at Harrenhal. Towards the beginning of the dance, Aemon killed Lucere, so the Blacks sent out blood and cheese to kill King Aegon's eldest son, Prince Jaehaerys, a son for a son. Meanwhile, Daemon flew up and claimed Harrenhal. That gave Queen Rhaenyra a stronghold in the heart of Westeros to which her supporters could rally. When Aemon and Aegon ambushed Rhaenys, both the king and his dragon were severely injured. As a result, Aemon named himself Protector of the Realm and Prince Regent, and Sir Criston Cole remained Hand of the King. They foolishly left King's Landing and went up to Harrenhal to reclaim it from Daemon, but when they got there, Daemon was gone. That night, they celebrated a great victory, but not long after, they found out that they had been tricked, that Daemon had snuck past them and helped Rhaenyra take King's Landing in their absence. Aemon was furious, and the first to suffer his wrath was Sir Simon Strong, the castellan of Harrenhal. Since Simon had yielded Harrenhal over to Aemon so quickly, Aemon began to wonder if Simon had been in on the trick. Simon protested his innocence, claiming that his own great-nephew, Larry Strong, was Lord of Harrenhal and King Aegon's Master of Whispers. But those denials only inflamed Aemon's suspicions. Aemon concluded that Larry the Clubfoot had also been in on it by telling Daemon and Rhaenyra when King's Landing was most vulnerable. Aemon commanded that Sir Simon Strong be given a sword. Let the gods decide if you speak truly, he said. If you are innocent, the warrior will give you the strength to defeat me. The duel that followed was utterly one-sided, with Prince Aemon cutting the old man to pieces and feeding his corpse to Vagar. Sir Simon's grandsons did not long outlive him. One by one, every man and boy with strong blood in his veins was dragged forth and put to death until the heat made of their heads stood three feet tall. No trueborn strong was spared, nor any bastard, except for Alice Rivers. There were many pretty young maids at Harrenhal for Aemon to choose from as a prize of war, yet for some reason Aemon chose Alice, who was at least twice his age, and if Mushroom was right about her, then she might have been three times his age or more. That caused some to wonder if she had seduced him with the dark arts. Outside the walls of Harrenhal, Roddy the Ruin and the Winter Wolves joined the forces with the Queen's allies in the Riverlands. Together, they smashed Lord Humphrey Lefford's forces on the western shore of the God's Eye. It was the bloodiest land battle of the dance, which is why the battle by the lakeshore became known as the Fish Feed. When Aemon received word of that great loss, he almost strangled the squire who had delivered the news. Thankfully, Alice Rivers was there to stop him from taking the boy's life. Eventually, Sir Criston Cole advised Prince Aemon to move south, to join their strength to Lord Hightowers, but Aemon refused to consider it. As regent for his brother, Aemon could have commanded Cole to stay, but he did not. He let him go. Some have speculated that Aemon allowed Cole to leave since he respected him, but others such as Mushroom believe that Cole had also come under one of Alice Rivers' love spells, and Aemon was glad to see his competition for her go. Septon Eustace had a slightly different stance. Eustace believed that Aemon had become so besotted with Alice Rivers that he simply could not bear the thought of leaving her. Whatever the reason, Sir Criston Cole and Prince Aemon decided to part ways. Cole took command of their host and led them south to join Ormond Hightower and Prince Daron, whilst Prince Aemon fought a war of his own in the Riverlands upon the back of Vagar. 
Aemon began raining fire on the traitors of the Riverlands in hopes of Rhaenyra sending out a dragon or two to stop him, and since Aemon rode on none other than Vagar, he liked those odds. When Aemon flew off, Lady Sapit the Frey swooped down and seized Harrenhal, and inside, she found Alice Rivers. Alice claimed to be carrying Aemon's child. I have the dragon's bastard in me, the woman said as she stood naked in the godswood with one hand upon her swollen belly. I can feel his fires looking at my womb. Nevertheless, Lady Sabah the Frey took Alice captive. Prince Aemon became the terror of the trident, descending from the sky to rain fire and death upon the Riverlands, but after a while, he returned to Harrenhal and burned every wooden structure in the castle. Vagar killed six knights and two score men-at-arms, whilst Lady Sabbath the Frey hid in the privy. Aemon then flew off with Alice Rivers. Prince Daemon and Nettles began to hunt Aemon in an attempt to fight Vagar two-on-one. They based themselves out of Maidenpool. Meanwhile, down in King's Landing, Rhaenyra began to mistrust everyone, including her own allies. Rhaenyra eventually sent a raven to Lord Mouton of Maidenpool and commanded him to kill Nettles, but Lord Mouton was hesitant to do that. Instead, the maester there told Daemon about the letter. Daemon and Nettles spent one more night there, then she flew off to spend the rest of her days in the remote mountains of the Vale whilst Daemon flew up to Harrenhal to wait for his nephew. When Aemon arrived, he had not come alone. Alice Rivers had flown with him, her long black hair streaming behind her her belly swollen with child. Aemon circled twice about the towers of Harrenhal, then brought Vagar down in the outer ward with Caraxes a hundred yards away. The prince helped his woman down from Vagar's back, then turned to face his uncle. Nuncle, I hear you have been seeking us. Only you, Damon replied. Who told you where to find me? My lady, Aemon answered. She saw you in a storm cloud, in a mountain pool at dusk, in the fire we lit to cook our suppers. She sees much and more, my Alice. You were a fool to come alone. Were I not alone, you would not have come, said Damon. Yet you are, and here I am. You have lived too long, uncle. On that much, we agree, Damon replied. Alice Rivers watched from atop Kingspire Tower as Aemon and Vagar soared up searching for Daemon and Caraxes. The fates of Daemon, Caraxes, Aemon and Vagar are a legend for another time. For the remainder of the war, the vast ruin of Harrenhal was shunned and forgotten. It became a haunt for outlaws, robber knights, and broken men who sallied forth from behind its walls to prey upon travelers, fisherfolk, and farmers. Their numbers grew, and it was said that a sorceress ruled over them a witch queen of fearsome power. When those tales reached King's Landing, the Hand of the King, Sir Tylan Lannister, decided it was time to reclaim the castle. Sir Regis Groves of the Kingsguard rode out with half a hundred men, and he was joined by a like number from Castle Darry. Regis had thought that one hundred men would be enough, but when he got to Harrenhal, the gates were closed and there were hundreds of armed men on the battlements. There were at least six hundred souls within the castle a third of them men of fighting age. When Sir Regis demanded to speak to their lord, a woman emerged to treat with him with a child beside her. The so-called Witch Queen of Harrenhal proved to be none other than Alice Rivers. Alice had been a prisoner and then the paramour of Prince Aemon Targaryen. Now, she claimed to be his widow. The boy by her side was Aemon, she told the knight. His bastard, said Sir Regis, his true-born son and heir, Alice spat back, and the rightful king of Westeros. She commanded the knight to kneel before your king and swear him his sword, but Cerritus laughed at this, saying, I do not kneel to bastards, much less the base-born whelp of a kinslayer and a milk cow. What happened next remains a matter of some dispute. Some say that Alice Rivers merely raised a hand and Cerritus began to scream and clutch his head, until his skull burst apart, spraying blood and brains. Others insist the widow's gesture was a signal, at which a crossbowman on the battlements let fly a bolt that took Sir Regis through the eye. Mushroom has suggested that perhaps one of the men on the walls was skilled in the use of a sling. Whatever the case, Sir Regis Groves of the Kingsguard was dead in an instant. Half a heartbeat later, the gates of Harrenhal burst open and a swarm of howling riders charged forth. A bloody fight ensued and the king's men were put to rout. 
Alice Rivers captured a dozen men and tortured them to death one by one. She then sent the last one back to Castle Derry to deliver a warning. I'm to tell you what she said, he gasped, but you can't laugh. The widow put a curse on me. Any man of you laughs, I die. When Sir Damon assured him that no one was going to laugh at him, the messenger said, don't come again unless you mean to bend your knees, she says. Any man who comes near her walls will die. There's power in them stones, and the widow's woken it. Seven save us all. She has a dragon. I seen it. The name of the messenger is lost to us, along with the name of the man who laughed. But someone did, one of Lord Dairy's men. The messenger looked at him, stricken, then clutched at his throat and began to wheeze. Unable to draw breath, he was dead in moments. Supposedly, the imprints of a woman's fingers could be seen upon his skin as if she had been in the room choking him. And that is the last we know of the mysterious Alice Rivers.